Welcome back to Well That's Interesting, the how many times can we say tit edition? Oh, a lot. Uh, <laughs> as many times as you need. Uh, just let me know. Just let so me know what my quote is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so many times. Today is in betweeny 103. The blue tit is becoming less blue. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how to fish a meteorite out of the ocean. These are problems. Um, I've, I didn't know we had. They are, yeah. These here are we new. Are. These are here new are. problems to mm-hmm. me. Yes. Um, which is saying a lot because I definitely have a lot of problems. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Jill Chacha. And I am, <laughs> I am with the riddled with problems, Marissa Riley. <laughs> That's me. And if you're not riddled with problems right now, right here in 22. 22- 2022, it feels like 2222. It's been so damn long. Uh, then teach me your ways. Please. I would love to know what life is like without problems. God, um, that's that would be a thing. That would I don't be, think yeah. it is a thing that, that, for anyone. But. <laughs> and if this is your first time listening, welcome to the flock. Welcome. Dr. Riley here comes in cold and learns everything in real time, just like you. It's true. I had no... <laughs> I had no idea what we were going to talk about today. And I still don't <laughs> but i'm excited to learn about this tit action yes. so much and tit action some ocean meteorite action. stuff <laughs> pumped yeah it is we're gonna travel the world today it's, it's really exciting speaking of are we gonna talk about where we are right oh, now? that's right we are recording live from the standard in london yeah hi um <laughs> We came <laughs> just in time for the Queen's funeral. That's right. um, Where we accidentally crashed a funeral. Oops. Not again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. This is our first funeral crashing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we're here in England. Uh, if you're also in England, what's up? How's it, how's it going? Yeah. How's it, how how's, are you? How's how, how, are you how do you feel right now? Do we, we've been trying to gauge like how people feel about the Queen, and we can't really figure it out because everyone is so damn nice. They're just... Keeping it every, keeping everything inside, yeah. just, just like a Brit. <laughs> yeah, y'all are keeping real calm, just and burying it down, burying so deep. it down, being and just being really like everyone here has an awesome personality. I'm, I yes. swear, I'm not pandering towards y'all. I'm just like <laughs> this is every conversation I've had with a stranger here has been like the best conversation. It's just so pleasant, you sons of bitches. You're just pleasant, pleasant, really just... damn pleasant. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Keep. Keep burying things. Keep it up, yeah. <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> uh, today, my friends, we have two monumental stories. Uh, the first is a study literally years in the making. It took thousands of observations. I'm not kidding, and I'm not going to lie. It's a little depressing. Okay. Because the outcome of the study once again suggests our behavior is physically changing some species. I mean, I'm not surprised. No, Our behavior not. is changing everything, yes. and, and it's not a good uh, thing. So, not yeah. a good thing. And then after the break, a little palate cleanser that's actually a big undertaking. Uh, how do you find and fish out a small but really important meteor that landed in the middle of the goddamn ocean? Sounds like a job for Marvel. Yes! Oh my it god, really, it's so Marvel. It really does. It sounds like something Tony Stark would do, yeah. and then create some sort so of super problems. being that would end up like ruining the world. Yeah. And then we would get the vision. There you go. Uh, and then stick it in his head, I assume. Yep. Isn't that what, what happened? Did yeah. You, oh my God. It's totally a, fuck, I forgot what they're called. The gems <laughs> that everyone was so pumped about. The infinity stones. Oh, ah, the infinity stones. That's How could it. I forget? That's right. Ah, I'm so sorry. No one. <laughs> no one cares. Okay. Anyways, tell me more yes, about there, all of this. There is an infinity, infinity stone uh, at the bottom of the Pacific. We'll get to it. But let's start with some not so great news. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> luckily, however, we need to head on over to two of the most beautiful places on Earth. Oh. I know. Are they both <laughs> Mexican restaurants? <laughs> It's a cl- uh, yeah, they're a close second to okay, that. Okay. Uh, brace your eyeballs. We're in the outskirts of Montpellier, France. Oh, my God. And the French island of Corsica. Oh, dear. I know. Oh, God. Oh, that's so gorgeous. I'm, like, grossed out. I, <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed. I'm, like, too gross of a person to be there. I know. We're not even wearing pants right now. No. We are pantless no. recording this. And so. all the pants I do have are covered in stains. <laughs> 
We'll not elaborate. Anyways, tell me more. It, it's, it's been a great vacation so yeah. far. Yeah, oh, we're so. having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> now, for my fellow geographically challenged Americans, where are these places and what the hell do they look like? Well, don't worry, I've got you. Uh, grab some sunscreen and imagine France. Oh, I will. Yes. <laughs> now, point to the middle of okay. the very southeast coastline. Okay. Overlooking the sea, and here is Montpellier. Or pronounced in Texan, Montpellier. There you go. I had to do that for do myself. it one more time. Montpellier. Montpellier. Fabulous. Yeah. So, some quick facts about this place that's so gorgeous it makes me angry. Uh, from our overlord Google, quote Montpellier or Montpellier. No. You would know e- better than I would. <laughs> They're going to be angry at me no matter what. Uh, uh, it's a city in southern France, 10 kilometers inland from the coast of the Mediterranean. Oh, my. The town's stately Gothic Cathedral Saint-Pierre is distinguished by conical towers Ugh. and dates, dates back to 1364. That is old. That is old. That's that is old. older than most stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the city's Antigone district is a chic modern development inspired by neoclassical motifs Paintings from the French and European old masters hang at the Musée Fabry. Is it actually the Antigone <laughs> district? As in oh, Antigone and... Um, there you go. You know, the uh. a- ancient Greek stuff. I played, I played Antigone in a play once. Ooh. Um, that sounds intense. A lot of incest and uh. depression. I think. I forgot. Can anyone remind, DM me and remind me what the plot to that was? Say it one more time, the name of it? Antigone. Antigone. I could be wrong. I mean, it sounds just uh, just fucking uh, exhausting with its uh, incest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> incest. So exhausting. It's probably Latin for incest or Greek for incest. Something like that. Let us know. <laughs> so, my friends, stop everything you're doing. It's not important. If you're driving, take your hands off the wheel. If you're watching a child, don't, just forget them. Just don't. They'll not be important. there later. Yeah, not They're important. not going anywhere. Please image search Montpellier, M-O-N-T-P-E-L-L-I-E-R. And you'll see that the words I just said just don't do it justice. Uh, Dr. Marissa, let's take a look at this place. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's do and it. Uh, please tell me if it's not the definition of old, charming, precise European aesthetic. Uh, all photos we talk about today will be on our social media stuff. So if you are, I don't know, operating on a patient and you can't image search this uh, beautiful city. Uh, you can come by our social media stuff and take a look. Yeah. Come on by. Yeah. Or Here stop is. operating. Um, oh, d- vomit. This is the prettiest, <laughs> like, town I've ever seen. Um, it, cl- doesn't, it doesn't look real. It's, not, it's 100% fake. This is a painting. <laughs> if you close your eyes and imagine, like, a cute town in Paris, or not Paris, uh, France, yeah. there's a difference. Right. Um, no, I know there's a difference. If you imagine like a cute, a cute hella town in uh, France, mm-hmm. you'd get this. It's it's these gorgeous little buildings with cute little windows. Yeah. It's like the perfect brightness with cute little fluffy clouds. It's got these gorgeous trees. It's also got palm trees in the mix. Very Ugh. Mediterranean. Very French. Um, yeah. You want to go? Do you want to go? Yeah, let's go. Should we go? We're almost there. Okay, let's we'll do go. It tonight um yeah so we're gonna go you're gonna go we're all gonna go we're all going fantastic uh so brace yourself because there's an even more beautiful place to behold no yeah i am sorry yeah so we need to swing by our second location the island of corsica oh god so please once again imagine the very southeast shoreline of france now move your finger a wee 105 miles further southeast into the Mediterranean. And okay. And you'll... <laughs> <laughs> I've never said okay so seriously in my life. Okay. And you'll find Corsica. Okay. It's actually closer to Italy than France. Okay. It's just 56 miles from northwest Italy. Oh, this is like multiple great things yeah. just converging. It's just the perfect location. It's just snug between two beautiful worlds which makes Corsica just a magical fucking place. Check this one out. Here we go. Ugh. Oh. Uh, ugh. I, I mean, this definitely is not real. Um, <laughs> you're joking. Yep. This is a con on me. Um, this is a joke on our listeners. This is not a real place. Y'all are going to see the picture and be like, yeah, no one, no one actually lives here. And the people who do live here 
are clearly like Tolkien elves <laughs> or like a type of vampire that lives forever comfortably. Yes. Um, you know they only eat like the finest fish from this ocean and they're all like 300 years old yeah. and look like models. So Pretty much. I'm really happy for if this is a real place. <laughs> I'm really happy for the people there because they are killing it. Oh my God. This is an orgasm of a town. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I need a nap or, or a it. cigarette or something <laughs> after looking at this picture. <laughs> we need to be their uh, tourist, tour, tourism, like, what do you call it, department? Yeah. An orgasm of a town. Come yeah. on back. You know you want one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they do have blue tits, which is really great. Wait, so, what? Yeah. What? It was in these two locations. Scientists from the UPV... E-U-H, and the Centre... So, oh, God, it's going to be so many French words. I'm you so sorry. You got this. You got this. Do your best. So the first department was U-P-V-E-U-H, and then the Centre d'Ecologie Fonctionnelle et Evolutive in Montpellier. Oh, oh my God. That was the most was gorgeous... Good? I don't know what you just said. <laughs> I was lost in your words uh, that I couldn't understand. Do you need a cigarette again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating. Okay. So... Uh, these two uh, beautiful locations with these two beautiful, um, I guess. Do you we... want a cigarette too? <laughs> I, I know, I'm suddenly very tired. <laughs> so scientists from these two places focused on two populations of floofy blue tits. What? You heard me right. Let's say it together. Floofy, floofy blue, blue tits. tits. That's right. Now, okay. F- for real, for real, they are blue tits. And when you see a photo of them, you'll agree they're adorable. Okay. Dr. Marissa, please describe this cutie. That is a titty. Oh, here we go. That's a titty. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So I'm not looking at boobs. Um, I don't think we're posting. We would post boobs, but we would post them. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> I'm looking at a damn bird. It's a, it's a really cute bird. She's like uh, floofy. She's fluffy. She's got fluffy little uh, feathers. She's got kind of a gorgeous blue head with like a, it's a more of like a white head and she's got sort of like a blue collar around her neck and then she's got a blue stripe across her eyes, very fashion. And she's got a yellow stomach and then kind of a green back and she's just very circular. She's very <laughs> spherical, but she's making it work because oh, yeah. she's in France. Exactly. So there's no such thing as like, uh, overweight in France, it's just oh, God, gorgeous. No. Just it's... everything is painfully, painfully beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, my friends, each year, over a 15-year period, between 2005 and 2019, researchers humanely captured and analyzed the color of these blue tits, accumulating... (laughs) I'm not going to get used to it. I'm sorry. (laughs) Accumulating more than 5,800 observations. Oh. Again, 15-year period, 5,800 observations. Okay. So, Dr. Marissa, let's not bury the lead any longer. From the University of Basque Countries magazine, what did they discover? I would love to talk more about these titties. Okay. Quote, the blue tit is characterized by its striking color, a blue crest, and a yellow breast. Y'all are not making this easy for me. (laughs) Uh, Continuing the quote, the results obtained in the study show a decrease in both populations, blue and yellow coloration between 2005 and 2019. That's a shame. Uh, In other words, the blue crests and the yellow breasts of blue tits, oh my god, in these two populations are on average less colorful right now than when research began. End quote. Why are they losing? Oh, they're gorgeous color. I know. They are. No. Yeah. But color is so in right now. (laughs) (laughs) I know. It's a shame. It's it's a fucking shame. And you asked the exactly right question. Yes, my friends, these birds are becoming less vibrant. And they've become less vibrant in 15 years. So why the fuck and how the fuck? Yeah. So David Lopez Idiaquez. Nailed it. Nailed it. A researcher in the UPV, EUH's Department of Plant Biology and Ecology, has a theory. Quote, Our work suggests that environmental changes, and specifically climate change, could be the main reason why birds, such as the blue tit, are undergoing a change in their physical features. God damn it. More specifically in the brightness and intensity of their coloration. End quote. 
Ah! I know. We're, we ruin everything. This is why we can't have nice tits. Because <laughs> we ruin fucking everything. Yeah, buy a cloth bag, damn it. <laughs> Recycle the fucking uh, uh, yes. paper. You yes, know? That, that will help. And also the government should do a lot more work. Okay. <laughs> so many things. So many things. Uh, okay. So my friends, <laughs> a, lot has, a lot has to be done. Yeah. Climate change is most likely the cause of faded plumage, which is affecting both sexes, by the way. Aww. It seems the combination of a rise in temperature of 1.23 degrees Celsius and a decrease of rainfall, a decrease in rainfall of just two two hundredths of an inch is enough to affect these birds. Okay, just real quick, it's, I'm just now processing like how quickly these birds changed in like- 15 years. 15 yeah. years. That is so fast Yeah. for like something to change color. Like, yeah. Like, can you imagine if like, I, I don't know, like, Everyone just started turning a little bit more purple. Oh, yeah. Re there regardless of race or anything, we all just started turning a little more purple. And then 15 years later, everyone's purple. Can you imagine that? It's scary. I think scary. then maybe we would do something about no, climate change. No, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. We just get different forms of racism. I think that's what we I think so. <laughs> who's, who's not enough purple? Who's too purple? Who's too, kind of thing. Who's too violet? Who's yeah. too eggplant? Who's too blue? They have to sit over... The, oh God, you know? Oh, and heaven forbid if anyone turns, like, green. Oh, oh my God. What it. a disaster. Fucking... So... The classism. <laughs> the classism. Uh, so, at the moment, this change is what researchers call plastic. Oh. So, what the fuck does that mean? Well, I gave it a Google... A, a Google? I gave it a Google... <laughs> I gave it a Google, and Eureka Alert had a pretty cool explanation as to what being plastic means. Well, when there's a change in an animal's territory, they have four options, okay. basically. Quote, the first is to undergo genetic change, like adaptation. Wow. The second is to undergo plastic change or change in physical characteristics without genetic change. Okay. The third is to migrate, and the last is to disappear. And wow. Now, that last one doesn't seem like a choice or an option, but I digress. So this dulling, in sum, isn't permanent right now. It's plastic. But, Dr. Marissa, how can this change become a permanent problem down the line? Oh, my God. Let's, let's get into it. Yeah. Um, David Lopez explained, uh, quote, It may appear to be a purely aesthetic change, but just the opposite is true, as this change in plumage may have an effect on the mating patterns of the species mm -hmm. in these birds traits such as coloring function as signals to indicate uh, to other individuals the quality of the specimen, uh, which are divisive uh, or decisive mm -hmm. when it comes to breeding." End quote. There so go. they're all not, yeah. you know, looking. Yeah. Their best. Yeah. They're not look, feeling, looking themselves. Yeah. They, they, you know, they're mm -hmm. not doing the things that whatever humans do to <laughs> attract whoever they want to be with. Yeah. This dulling may cause mi misconnections, if you will. I, that's a great way of putting yeah. it. Instead of me being like, oh, they don't <laughs> feel as hot. <laughs> they don't. They don't. They, they don't feel as hot. Yeah. Yeah. A bird may actually be completely healthy, but because they're not the most fashionable, they won't be asked to the prom. Uh, or whatever an other analogy works for you here. Yeah. 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 Not cool. Yeah. Imagine if you didn't have that one thing that you need to leave the house. Yes. For me, it is, it's like 12 things. But <laughs> <laughs> think about your thing think and think about, about not having it. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, now I wish I had a solid conclusion for you, but this is one of those times, like time will tell. Yeah. You know, we shall see. What will become of these birds and all creatures if we don't change course? Hopefully we will see some bright blue titties once again. Yes, please. Please, God. Please. Save <laughs> the titties. Save the titties. Forget the queen. Save the titties. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. T t take your time to grieve or whatever, but then eventually start thinking about the titties. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, after the break. Yes. Something less of a bummer. Yes. Let's find extraterrestrial treasure in the ocean. Finally. Stay tuned. Please do.
Hello, everyone. You may recognize me as Gabby from the History of Everything podcast. And my name is Brenna, and you don't recognize me from anything yet. Together, we're two scientists who explore all of the weird little questions and conspiracies of the universe in our new podcast, Mystery of Everything. Everything has an explanation. We hope. But that is what we're here to figure out. We will dive into the science behind many popular conspiracy theories, such as vaccines causing autism, flat earth theory, and was the moon landing fake? And if so, why the heck would anyone even do that? But it's not just conspiracies. There's a lot of cool mysteries that we will attempt to use science to explain, such as near-death experiences, what made the Vikings go berserk, and can I control my co-host with MK Ultra? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, make sure to check out the Mischief Everything podcast everywhere where you find your podcasts. When Johann Rahl received the letter on Christmas Day, 1776, he put it away to read later. Maybe he thought it was a season's greeting and wanted to save it for the fireside. But what it actually was, was a warning, delivered to the Hessian colonel, letting him know that General George Washington was crossing the Delaware and would soon attack his forces. The next day, when Rawl lost the Battle of Trenton and died from two Colonial Boxing Day musket balls, the letter was found, unopened in his vest pocket. As someone with 15,000 unread emails in his inbox, I feel like there's a lesson there. Oh well, this is The Constant, a history of getting things wrong. I'm Mark Chrysler. Every episode, we look at the bad ideas, mistakes, and accidents that misshaped our world. Find us at constantpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, Jill Chacha here from Well That's Interesting, and I am absolutely thrilled to tell you about Spotify for Podcasters. I use it, I love it, and it all started by downloading the free Spotify for Podcasters app, which has all the tools you need in one place to record and edit your masterpiece of a podcast. Spotify for Podcasters also distributes your show to all major platforms, so when you hit publish, your episodes will stream not only on Spotify, but I'm talking about the Apples, the Googles, Stitcher, Good Pods, the other ones. <laughs> You get the idea. And you can monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership required. You could also set up monthly subscriptions and record ads just like this one. So what are you waiting for? Download Spotify for Podcasters today and start changing the world. Oh, and please, stay interesting. And we're back. We are so back. We're so back. And we're heading on over to another paradise. Good. <laughs> Yes. Excellent. Lucky us, lucky us. And it also happens to be a place members of the flock should be pretty familiar with. Oh. Yeah, we're on the beautiful island of Papua New Guinea. Take me there now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've been here a few times. Yeah. Back in episode 079, we talked about the indigenous who raised the world's most dangerous bird. Do you remember that? I do, I do, I do. It's been a minute. Yes. And back in episode 094, we learned the New Guinea singing dog isn't extinct after all. I'm not going to lie. That was one of my favorite episodes. And y'all <laughs> should go listen because these dogs are so cute. And they're, they're really so good. perfect. Do you remember the puppies? Yes. <laughs> that was yes. very serious. I was worried for a second I mixed them up because we talked about another preserved puppy episode. Oh, the We wolf. have a couple yeah. excellent puppy episodes. Um, but this one's really good. Really cute. Really cute. Really, really cute. Well, this magical fucking place just racked up. Another amazing wonder. I know it. Back, back in 20... <laughs> <laughs> Why was that so weird? <laughs> Tell me more. Back in 2014, a very special object entered our atmosphere and splashed down somewhere about 186 miles or 300 kilometers north of Manus Island, a tiny place off the shores of Papua New Guinea. That just makes me think of the beginning of annihilation. That's not what's happening here. Oh. But that's what I was Thinking magical flowers. Oh, I'll put a pin in the alien thing. Okay. I <laughs> was going to either way. Um, so there you go. So, Dr. Marissa, let's cut to the chase. What object fell into the Pacific Ocean and why is it so damn unique? My money is on aliens, but I will talk about what it really is right now. Quote, a small meteorite, it could be an alien, from another star system crashed 
into the Pacific Ocean with energy equivalent to about 121 tons of TNT. Amazing. It's huge. Uh, that's huge. Uh, Amir Siraj, uh, an astrophysicist at Harvard University and the first author of a new paper, told Jamie Carter of Live Science, quote, finding such a fragment would represent the first contact humanity has ever had with a material larger than dust from beyond the solar system. End quote. Sounds like a big deal. Sounds yeah. like possibly aliens. I'm so ah. pumped. The truth <laughs> is down there. I hate myself. Oh, Jesus. I hate myself. She did it. I did it. She we were there. all thinking it. No uh, one was trademark, thinking it. Trademark, trademark, trademark. Trademark, <laughs> trademark, trademark. <laughs> Turn into a hashtag. The truth is down At there. me, even though I'm never on Twitter. At Mar not Marissa. <laughs> so, my friends, the first... Oh, oh, my notes. Okay, first. So, my friends, the first known space rock from beyond our solar system, from somewhere from our Milky Way out there, is sitting at the bottom of the ocean. And just to give you an idea of just how large our solar system is and the odds of it landing here... All right, get ready for this. Okay. My friends, our solar system alone is so large, light from our sun would take about 555 days to reach the edge. That's a long time. That's right. Going at the speed of light would take nearly a year and a half. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and this meteorite, lovingly called CNOS, C-N-E-O-S, CNOS 2014-0108, to signify the date it landed, came from somewhere well beyond our solar system. So it racked up a lot of miles. We don't even know where exactly it came from. Oh. I do. Yeah. <laughs> An alien threw it. Oh, put a pin in that. I'm going to keep bringing that. it up. Put a pin in it. I just want to point out, I did not read a single thing about this. I did not know anything about this. And I'm actually not a doctor. <laughs> It's just a theory. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> You're welcome. I do read a lot of Reddit threads about skincare, though. So. Good enough. That doesn't qualify me for anything. Uh, tell, tell me more. Good enough. So, I know what you're thinking. How do we know it came from the great beyond? Well, great question. Jamie Carter also asked, and Amir answered, quote, hmm. Cenos is thought to be from another star system because it was traveling at 37.2 miles per second. What? Yeah. Or 60 kilometers per second okay. relative to the sun. That's too fast for it to be bound by our sun's gravity. At the Earth's, at the Earth's distance from the sun... Oh, I can do this again. We got this. <clears throat> at the Earth's distance from the sun, any object traveling more than 42 kilometers per second or 26 miles per second is on an unbounded hyperbolic escape trajectory relative to the sun. This means it was clearly exceeding the local speed limit for bound objects, and it didn't cross any paths with any other planets along the way, so it must have originated from outside the solar system. That, that is cool as fuck. Also, I really love the phrase, um, it's on an unbounded hyperbolic escape trajectory relative to the sun. That's yeah. how I would describe every time I leave a party. <laughs> Or just really any structure at all. That's how I just leave. Yeah. That's my... That's how any introvert leaves a party. Just beelining it. Yeah. it's always. I always have an escape trajectory <laughs> relative to the sun. Exactly. <laughs> know, know your exits. Very important. Know them all. <laughs> even the emergency ones that will cause a noise. It's worth it. <laughs> If it will phone the police, who cares? Let oh, the no. people there deal with it. It's not your problem anymore. Your problem is getting home and back to the couch or the bed, whatever is your favorite. There you go. Everyone has one. I love this. I love it so much. Yeah, I forgot I, what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Irish exit and cause a scene. Yeah. And then just leave. Yeah. Just enjoy the, your the, life the at home. The finest advice from, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Go home. Here, it's okay. <laughs> You're allowed. So, needless to say, getting our hands on an interstellar space traveler is a big deal. Yeah. It could tell us a lot about our universe. So, how in God's name do you get a meteorite out of the ocean? Great question. A meteorite that's, get this, it's only a foot and a half long. Oh, she's and small. And tiny. And maybe somewhere off the coast of an island near Papua New Guinea. Any ideas, Dr. Marissa? What do you Robot. Good, close. Really? Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, that was my only guess. <laughs> 
Robot. Close. Even an even simpler robot because magnets. Really? Magnets. Fuck yeah, magnets. Fuck yeah, magnets. Uh, shout out to Breaking Bad. Someone was watching Breaking Bad over. That's how they they did oh, something. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's how they wiped all those computers or something. One computer. Uh, amazing. All they had to do was wipe one computer with a bunch of magnets. Yeah. Big ass magnet with a bunch of batteries. I can remember. Tell me Fantastic. more about uh, this. Yeah, so put a pin in big ass magnets okay. because, uh, yeah, I'm talking about good old fashioned magnet fishing. Fuck yeah. Uh, Dr. Marissa, tell us about Amir's plan. I, am, I would really love to. I'm really excited. I also had a ton of coffee, so I'm apo- <laughs> I apologize. Um, uh. From Live Science, quote, the Galileo Project is a $1.6 million expedition to lower a magnet similar in dimensions to a king-size bed into the waters estimated to be the meteorite's resting spot. That's about 186 miles or 300 kilometers north of Manus Island in the Bismarck Sea uh, in the Southwest Pacific Ocean. Nailed it. Take a breath. Okay. Quote, most meteorites contain enough iron that they will stick to the type of magnet we plan on using for the ocean expedition. Amir said, given its extremely high material strength, it is very likely that the fragments of the meteorite are ferromagnetic. Nailed it. End quote. So it sounds like they got a magnet that will work. They got a huge ass fucking magnet. Yeah. And, uh... What the fuck is ferromagnetic? Yeah. Don't worry, I gave it a Google. So basically, it's a fancy ass word for something that's super magnetic. Fuck yeah. <laughs> or highly susceptible to magnets due to composition and the object's atoms and shit. I love it. So there you go. Super magnetic. So a million dollar magnet, my friends, will be towed along the seabed at one mile at a time for 10 days. Again, I find myself saying yeah. these people love their jobs. They fucking love their job. This sounds like the most time consuming, boring thing in the world to me. <laughs> Just think about all the other shit they're gonna pick up. That's kinda cool. Oh, I didn't think about that. Tons of treasure. They're gonna solve a lot of like murder cases. Oh on my accident. god, so many bodies. Oh my god. <laughs> they're gonna find it all. Um <laughs> but yeah, this sounds very time consuming and something you really have to be passionate about oh my god. to do. Yeah. So and I'm happy for them. I'm happy to report $500,000 has already been raised, and about another million is needed. But if you think this is pricey, Amir thinks we're actually saving a lot of money if our goal here is to learn about cosmic material. Oh. Quote, the alternative way to study an interstellar object at close range is by launching a space mission to a future object passing through the Earth's, Earth's neighborhood, said Amir. That's a good point. But that would be a thousand times more expensive at about a billion dollars. Yeah, and yeah. Quote, yeah, so, going to space is super expensive. Oh, Jesus. Don't do it. Yep. <laughs> save some money. Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't like to save some catch? Catch? Catch. Save some cash and touch something out of this world at the same time. Now, a twist. Oh. Oh, my okay. God. Yeah. So when I wrote these notes a little over a month ago, <laughs> well, I wrote these notes like a little over a month ago. Yeah. Uh, just a week prior to recording this in betweeny, a little more news and a little more detail about the Galileo project has been revealed. Yes, I okay. love it when this happens. So update, a, yeah. update. It's a little bit more on the kookier side. Okay. One may say. Uh, another member of the research team, Professor A.V. Loeb of Harvard University, came out to the press expressing very plainly he believes the object is possibly alien technology. I love it. I love it. I oh. am here for it. I believe him. <laughs> Although there's no supporting evidence. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> that's I don't okay. need any. <laughs> I know. What's, I sound like such a psycho. <laughs> the coffee in London is very strong. It is real. Yes. Um, no, but it's, it's exciting. It's, it's very, it's, yeah. All of it's exciting. Uh, NPR.org published a comment from him on August 31st. Quote, there's also the possibility that it will be made of some alloy that nature doesn't Put together Ooh. and that would imply the object is technological oh. if you ask what my wish is if it's indeed of artificial origin and there was some component of the object that survived and it has any buttons on it yes. i would love to press them same End quote <laughs> same space came to us i am so uh, thrilled and i hope it's like a nice little message like oh hi hi how's it going Oh, want to hang? How are yes you, or no? How are your blue tits? 
<laughs> not so blue. Oh, uh, God. So, my friends, watch this space. No pun intended. No. Oh. Uh, we are going to find out shortly what this meteorite slash object from another solar system is made of. And some f- some of the folks looking for it hope it's an iPhone an alien dropped. Amazing. So, yeah. theirs are bigger. <laughs> or maybe it's their version of a MacBook. Yeah, could be a MacBook just thrown out. Yeah, you drop, dropped it. Into sure. it, yeah. I've dropped mine. Exactly. Yeah. So we shall see. In the meantime, you can hit up projects.iq.harvard.edu slash Galileo for updates and way more info. There's like 100 people working on this project. It's huge. I mean, I'm going to bookmark it right after this and <laughs> add it to my daily <laughs> list of things to check that <laughs> yeah. don't really impact me, but could. Also, you heard it here first. Harvard University believes uh, aliens exist. If Harvard least, believes uh, it, <laughs> you know, it, it might actually be true. <laughs> uh, and thank you for listening, rating, subscribing, telling your friends about the alien iPhone at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, uh, yeah. and tell them about blue tits. And don't describe the bird. Just keep, just keep saying blue tits over yeah. and over again. Yeah, tell them um, and tell your mom. And tell your mom. <laughs> and please, stay interesting. Please do.